This video is going to show you how to compare two independent groups using R. So it's not going to show you specific tests. In fact, it's going to show you three variations of t-tests. Essentially, we'll do a standard t-test, we'll do a Welch test, and we'll also do a Mann-Whitney test. The example is based upon the biggest schism in Great Britain today, um, and it's not Brexit. It's um, about the place of chips and gravy on the nation's culinary pedestals. Well, as all right-minded people know, chips and gravy is a fantastic thing, but there is a tendency for people from the south of England to not have gravy on the chips and maybe even do bizarre things like put mayonnaise on chips. So this experiment explored people's liking of chips and gravy, whether they came from um, the north of England, in particular, which is like the northern county of Lancashire, and compared to a southern county, which is Surrey, about the most northern and southern counties that you can get. So in this study, participants sat down and they were given a tray, which is this additional serving method of chips and gravy, and they were given five minutes to eat as much as they wanted, or as much as they possibly could, as in the case of some people. And at the end, we measured how many calories or kilocalories of chips and gravy were consumed. And it was hypothesized that people from Lancashire would consume more calories than those who were from Surrey. So we're going to analyze this data set using R. There's a few things we've got to do first. We've got to install a few packages. Our, our read Excel package, an effect size package. This will enable us to compute a Cohen's D or another effect size that's appropriate for our man Whitney, which we'll cover later, and car package, which will enable us to produce um, Levine's test so we can look at homogeneity of variance. So we just need to click run and install these packages. You only have to do this once. You don't have to keep installing them every time that you want to run them. So these packages are now installed on my computer. And the first thing I need to do is simply read the data set in. When I first started out using R, I always found reading data sets actually to be the most challenging thing. I never found the actual stats hard, but getting it to talk to data is often a thing that people find quite difficult. So we're just going to do it in a really simple way using the read Excel package. There's a bit of code in. So it draws from our library of packages, the read Excel, and then it's going to create. I'm going to create this data frame called t-test which is basically this data set here, chips and gravy t-test Excel. And all these can be found in the link to the Google Drive if you want to practice on these. And we can click view as well. And that'll enable us to look at our data. So we just click run. And there you go, the view commands just showing us our data. So we've got condition whether people are from Surrey or Lancashire. And then we've got the number of calories of gravy and chips that they've consumed. Now, we also want to add this command that says attach t-test. The attach command is just dead useful because it just means that the database we have will be searched by R. So if we put in a variable name, it means R will be able to find our variable name. So the next thing we want to do is obviously analyze our data. There's a few things that you may want to do first. It's always worth looking in your data graphically and just check Distribution, and distribution is not the most important thing in the world, or outliers or any issues that may be with your data set at all. The easiest way to do that is we can produce a box plot. So this is our box plot command, we just ask for a box plot of our dependent variable. I like that, click run. And there we go. This is our box plot, as you can see, it's pretty neatly normally distributed data set, no big outliers or anything like that. So there's certainly no concerns about the data in that way. The other assumption we may want to look at is Levine's test of homogeneity of variance. You want to look at homogeneity of variance. You can do that using a command from our car package. So we ask for the library car, so we pull in our car package that we've installed, and then we ask for a Levine's test, and that's our DV and our IV. And this is simply just going to run that test. And we've got our Levine's test here, Levine's test for homo homogeneity of variance. We've got a degrees of freedom but our f-statistic and our p-value. And as you can see, we've got no statistically significant effect. You may wish to write this up. 
as written below just to show the check we've got homogeneity variance and that's how you could write that up if you wished. So we know our data is suitable for a standard form of t-test and then we just give our t-test command. So we have to do t-test, this is our dv by our iv of condition, this is our null hypothesis mean difference of zero, null hypothesis being there's no difference between the groups. Our alternative hypothesis is two-sided, so it's a two-tailed hypothesis. We're asking it to generate 95% confidence intervals. We have a quality of variances, we have a quality of variance, because we know we did our Levine's test, and paired is false. We haven't got a pairing of our groups, we're not doing a paired samples test. So we just state that command. And of course, once you've written this once, you'll never have to do it again for this form of t-test, you just change your IV and your DV names. So let's run this, and there's our two sample t-test output. It's got our t-statistic, our degrees of freedom, and our p-value. We've also got confidence intervals. This is confidence intervals for the mean difference. Okay, so the confidence intervals for the mean difference between our conditions. And that's a mean for the Lancashire group and a mean for the Surrey group. So we could just write this up. Um, but you'd also, you know, you'd probably want to give what the mean difference between the groups is, otherwise these confidence intervals lack. They don't really tell you very much at all. Well, we're going to leave that for now because I'll show you how we could do it for our um, effect size, which we'll generate now. But our write up can just look like that. Just give our t statistic, our degrees of freedom, our p value. So, all very well, but let's give an effect size as well. So, now we need to just bring in our effect size package from the library. So, library effect size, and then we're asking for a Cohen's D for our DV by our IV, and that's it. Just click run, and here's our Cohen's D. It's got a minus, but it doesn't really matter, so it depends on the order you put in your variables. We can ignore that, it's just a magnitude of a difference in two groups. 0 0.052, and it even gives you an explanation of this effect size being negligible. And there you go, and it even gives us our confidence intervals for our effect size as well. So we can report our confidence intervals along with this as well, so we can just simply add that to the end of our write-up after we report our Cohen's day as well. Relatively straightforward to produce these statistics and to write it up. And as I say, you know, once you've done this once, we've got a t-test framework. You know, we've done it, we've written up all our results, and we're all quite happy happy with them. And we send these out for publication, but then we run into a problem. The problem being this man, former England manager, um, and self-styled King of the North. He was once caught on camera drinking a pint of wine while in a curry house, which is the most northern thing anybody has ever done in history of the world. So here's our King of the North, and when he heard about our study, he got very angry with us, which is quite a common emotion for Big Sam Allardyce. And he, his problem was we simply sampled people from who happened to be in Surrey and Lancashire at the time, and his problem was, what about people who were born and bred in those counties? Surely that's what matters. So, because we were quite scared of him, we went out and collected some more data. In exactly the same way as before, but we made sure we tested people whether they who were born in Lancashire and born in Surrey. So we're now going to analyse this new set of data using a slightly different statistical technique. So we can actually copy over a lot of this. Let's just differentiate the two analyses. The hash, hashes and bread. Just some gravy welch. And we're just going to call that t-test as well, just for ease. So this is our new data set. So it looks almost identical to the other one, but our figures are all a little bit different. And remember, so we've read this new data set in. We've called it t-test. It's held a t-test in the memory, and we're going to use that attach command. So we'll read it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a box plot on this one again, just like before. And the variables are called the same thing, so we can just keep running it. 
here's our new box plot as you can see there's not a great deal of difference between this and the other one and um, obviously there seems to be a bit more skewed this data set a bit more of a positive skew to it but it's not something we need to be particularly concerned with and then we, we've already called this in previously so we'd have to recall that in so we just click run and here we go here's our Levine's test and if you look at our Levine's test though it's significant it's highly significant so we do not meet the assumption of homogeneity variance we actually have to do another form of test and actually what test we have to do instead is a welts test now actually for all intents and purposes you might as well always do a welts test there's no real situation where a standard t-test is better than a welts test and um, so if it makes your life easier you may actually just want to do a welts test in future so in order to run a welts test we've got our t-test command so everything stays the same except our equality of variances is false that's the only change to it it's all exactly the same or null no difference in the groups two-sided 95 percent confidence in intervals we just that we haven't got homogeneous variance and it is false so we can highlight that and we click run and here is our welts two sample test there's our t-statistic our degrees of freedom our p-value so now we've got highly significant results here confidence intervals for the difference and a mean for the northern and the mean in the southern group as well now actually the welts test is default as the t-test and as i said earlier all these are actually default so instead of writing this full command if we could use that command and as you'll see it produces you exactly the same results because it does the t-test that works in any situation regarding homogeneity variance as a default so it's quite useful if you can always just produce a welts test and you can just use this really simple command db iv done that's all you need and again we can write up our welts test accordingly however we can also get our effect size if you rerun effect size earlier as we have done you don't need to call it again so that's for our cones d and there we go we've got our cones d and again it even gives us some information it says we've got a medium effect size here and gives us confidence as well so we can write all these statistics up accordingly if we want so we give our t statistic our degrees of freedom our p value and our cones d and we can give some confidence intervals alongside our cones d as well so the reader's got a really full understanding of our data so after so after doing this i think sam aldice is going to be very happy with us because you know we've made sure we've got people from lancashire and so on but unfortunately we ran into another problem though he's quite happy with that we'd found this difference knowing the cultural importance of chips and gravy he thought killer calories calories was nonsense and he'd be much happier with good honest northern opinions about things so worried about him getting angry with us we went away we designed another simple experiment and what we did this time we recruited 25 northerners and 25 southerners checking place of earth very carefully which we've called conditioning our new data set and then we simply asked them to rate how tasty they found it on a one to five like it scale and the scores start from one why would you ruin chips you monster to not nice to take it or leave it to nice to ambrosia of the gods and people basically rated chips and gravy on this one to five scale so we need to now analyze this set of data and we're going to call this new data set Mount Whitney test you can call it anything you want so we run this in i'll just show you this new data you can view it so we've got condition south north and then our tasty scores where the people rated tasty scored from one to five and of course don't forget attach command so let's quickly look at our box plot so our dependent variable is called tasty so let's get a box plot for that 
Okay, now you can see the box plot doesn't look too bad at all. However, what is critically important to understand is this, this data is just simply ordinal data to a 1 to 5 Likert scale latitude. So really our data is ordinal data. So we should we can treat it as such. So as opposed to doing a from t test, we can do a non-parametric statistical test on this data instead. Non-parametric version of this test is a Man Whitney U test. So to do Man Whitney U, we use this command. So we ask for Wilcox test. So we just got our DV, our IV, null hypothesis, median difference, zero. Two-tailed alternative hypothesis. When you want to generate confidence intervals, you need two commands for this when we're doing it this way. And because we generate them and we ask them to be 95%. Groups are not paired. So it's two independent samples. Okay, this bit here, exact equals false. This means do not compute an exact p-value. We can't compute the exact p-value. By exact p-value, I don't mean we're not going to get p equals, we're just going to get less than. It's just a different way of calculating it. And we can't do that if we've got any tied ranks. And in this case, we have. So it produces an approximate p. And correct too, this just does what's called a continuity correction on our data. So we highlight that, click run. And here is our output. And you can see it says a Wilcox and Ransom test with continuity correction. So Wilcox and Ransom test is an alternative name for what we've done. And here's our W statistic. It's p value. Now it's p value written with scientific notation. I'll show you how to change that in one moment. Here's 95% confidence intervals. Ultimately, this is basically your median difference. If you want to get rid of your scientific notation, you can use the command So if we just run that now, this is going to turn scientific notation off. Let's just rerun our test. And there we go, we've got our exact p-value now. So it's highly, highly significant effect, and we can just write this up accordingly. So we could just give our W statistic, our N number of participants of our sample, which is 15, our p-value. So we, we don't use the traditional code as D. There's different forms. So the appropriate effect size is what's called Varga and Delaney's A. Now, we it's in the effect size library. You don't need to keep pulling this in, so I'll go and highlight that this time. And then we just say Varga and Delaney's A, tasty by condition. And we click run. And there we go, it gives us our estimates, our A statistic, italic A statistic, and that's 0.94, and it even gives us our handy um, explanation of that this is a large effect size. So we can add that to the end of our write-up as well, if we wished. And when we finally did all this, we finally managed to please, please the King of the North, who went off with Daenerys Targaryen, and I think that actually does make a better ending than the actual Game of Thrones ending altogether. So hopefully that's not only giving you some closure on Game of Thrones, but showing you how to do some basic analyses in R.